Here are Liz Clayman and David Asman. On a day where we lost nearly 100,000 jobs and the unemployment rate stayed at 9.6%, the Dow actually saw only good news, back above 11,000 for much of the day, and even right now as these numbers settle. Plus, gold is up again. So what's up to PNC Financial? James Dunnigan, along with our Bulls and Bears panel, Matt McCall, Mike Norman, Al Lewis, and the man who is whispering ever so slightly in the background, Charlie Gasparino, the author of the whispers. great new book, Bought and Paid for the Unholy Alliance Between Obama and Wall Street. There it is. All right, James, first to you. Uh, we were talking about, you know, you need look no further than what the Fed is doing. That's why gold is going up, and that's why the market is going up. You agree? I agree. This is a period of the, uh, that old adage, do not fight the Fed, uh, I think will hold true. And uh, on the back of what was, uh, at least at the headlines, a fairly lackluster unemployment number would suggest that they're, they're, we're likely they're going to get continued help from the Fed going forward. James, is this, though, just that basic market behavior where they say, well, we know what's down the line, and that is the Fed pumping more money into the system, interest rates remaining remaining low although nobody's really borrowing that much money in a, in a meaningful way but is this sort of a let's lean on the fed trade i i the partly liz and there's no doubt about it i think we're actually in one of those spots where the bad news is good and good news is good so we got some lackluster numbers which would suggest the fed is, will step in if they need to they have said they will uh so they will come to the aid uh, and if you get some good, if they were better reports, and actually the underlying part of the report is the private sector did add jobs uh, in that period. So headline is we lost jobs, but private sector is adding jobs. Right. The, the economy is still flashing yellow, but uh, I, I think there are some prospects that uh, will continue in this recovery, even though it's a tepid at best. Well, Charlie, here's something that's not so good from my perspective anyway. The Fed is going to buy up a lot of government debt. That is, the Fed is enabling. That's the word you use for alcoholics, right, where you <laughs> enable an alcoholic to drink more. They're enabling, are they not, by buying up some of this debt, the government to spend more. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what's scary, I don't know how you find anything good, really, out of this employment number. This is not a good employment number. The, the employment rate has stayed stagnant. If it went up a little bit, right, a, a little more, you'd at least think people are going back into the workforce, right? They're starting to look for jobs again, and they really have it. I think there's a really bad report. And here's the other thing. I think the market is purely trading on interest rates, not the fact that the economy is getting better. That What do you get when you buy a bond? Well, Mike Norman, What's who cares? Your bond Put, don't right now. try to fathom what the market is doing. Just figure out how to participate in it, especially if it's, <laughs> it's a way that you can do well. Don't think too much. Um, look, and, and I think Jim mentioned this. If you parse through the number today, you had a 64,000 uh, increase in private sector jobs. It's not huge, but since the beginning of the year, you had almost an 850,000 increase in private sector jobs. It's going in the right direction. I'd like to correct one thing you said, David. I mean, the Fed doesn't need, I mean, the, the Treasury, the government doesn't need the Fed to buy bonds in order for it to spend. The government spends merely by crediting bank accounts. The you Fed, don't believe in monetizing the, debt. Well, the, the, the way, uh, just to let you know, the way the Fed sets rates is by buying securities. It adds reserves to the system. The rates come down. It's easy. targeting interest rates. Quantitative easy. It's targeting lower uh, bond yields. So, I mean, but that is a positive for the market. There is a multiple there. And so uh, that is, but there, there are things that suggest, to me at least, that we're in sort of this muddle through environment. We're going to see slow growth, and it's not necessarily bad for the stock market. Profits are going to be good. Productivity is high, and that's what All investors right, but Matt, are looking as, at. To Liz's point, Matt McCall, you don't fight the tape. And the bottom line is, you've been saying, as, as you have a lot of problems with what the government and the Fed are doing, sure. but you're not fighting the tape. You told us to get into this market a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I don't agree with what's going on. And, you know, the, the number today was bad, but the quantitative easing QE2 is going to happen. We saw that in the inflation numbers. You look at the tips. The tips it's been breaking out. People are pricing in future inflation uh, in, a, in the last couple of months at the highest level that we've seen since early summer. And the reason for that is because we know that we're going to keep printing money. I don't agree with that. But again, to Mike's point, you know, the market does look good. And I think the market will continue to do good. And the one story nobody's talked about yet is we kicked off earnings season this week. And I think earnings are going to come in much better than expected. I think a lot of these companies, we bought Goldman Sachs this week on anticipation of better than expected numbers. And I think that's a big reason also people are setting up for an earnings rally. Uh, Al Lewis, again, and that's a great point. You don't fight the tape, you don't fight the herd, but you don't want to get stampeded either on a wrong way trade that turns quickly. 
Well, the last time we rode up to 11,000, just last May, what did we have? The flash crash that took it down in a matter of hours, and we've been eking our way up since then. You know, meantime, we see gold and we see silver rising. It's just crazy to buy gold and silver, right? But, uh, you know, where else do you put your money right now? In a commodity? Or, uh, I mean, you certainly don't buy T-bills right now. So uh, the money's pouring into the stock market, and as soon as there's somewhere else to put it, guess what? It's going to come right out. A lot, know, of, a lot of small investors have already gotten out. You do realize that the market hit 14,000 in October 2007, right before the bottom fell out. I mean, did, you know, with little different ec macroeconomic trends, but there's a destimulative, a ac yeah, but well, a, a destimulative econo uh, fiscal policy coming early but next year. Um, you know, cap and trade. I mean, who knows what, what what's yeah, basic? But, but and by the way, when does it? Let me ask you this: You're an economist, and you understand money flows and all that sort of stuff. When does it happen? When does it happen? Now he's so close to me, he can smack. <laughs> <him>. <laughs> <laughs> You can't. Don't risk misrepresenting. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to rip I'm going to ask you. <laughs> when does, if, if we don't have dramatically better employment numbers, I mean, 9.6% is pretty lousy. It's if we, lousy. If we stay at 9.6%, that has to have an impact on consumer spending at some point, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's when does that hit the, When does that hit the, the economy and then the markets? Look, we, we've reached a level now where um, businesses have adjusted to a higher level of unemployment, and they've employed a lot of uh, gains in productivity to maintain margins. And there's another element to the story, which is the foreign sector. It's doing very, very well. You sure. have a lot of... Overseas. And the dollar's weak. It's giving a competitive boost right. to a lot of U.S. I've got to give James the last word here because he's our guest. James, is there any... Oh, he's saying, but let me just ask you, James, is there a hedge that you make against the scenario that Charlie just suggested that the bottom might fall out of this market? Well, I think the, uh, the, the key there is to stay on the sidelines, but I think to, to the point is I think we have a lot of factors acting in our benefit. So we have a midterm elections that are coming up that are going to certainly deliver change in a better environment going forward, uh, probably between Washington and business. Uh, you have the third year of a presidential election as a positive, and in quarters where, in fact, uh, we've had a good September, the fourth quarter is, uh, is a distinct positive. So there's a number of factors that I think on today's rally, this rally will continue to, uh, to the highs we saw back in April. Well, President Obama stayed on message today saying we're on the right track to turn things around. Here's what he said earlier today. It took us a long time to get out of where we are right now. And the damage left by this recession is so deep that it's going to take a long time to get out. Uh, it will take determination, persistence, and most importantly, the will to act. Do we need to act with more stimulative spending? By the way, what is he talking about? <laughs> talking about how, you know, we're we, not there yet. So do we need to add more to it? And I will throw that to Mike Norman because yeah. as the economist here, <laughs> go for it. Well, I think you know where I stand on this, Liz. I think I absolutely uh, we need more because what the economy is suffering from is an acute lack of demand. And right now the private sector, for whatever reason, is not able to provide that demand. You have to have the government. It's, it's essentially a priming of the pump. And if you look at what has happened, if you're, you know, honest about what has happened since stimulus, you've seen a 12 percent reversal in GDP to the upside. You've seen an increase in economic output of 500 billion, um, household net worth up by 6 trillion. You've actually seen some job creation. We don't like to talk about it. It's uh, absolutely not it's enough. Me, we need not, more. But you've me. seen and you've seen an 80 percent rise in the stock market. And this came with a relatively small stimulus, 5 percent of GDP. Okay. But Charlie, the fact is, is that the administration's own budget forecasts 4 percent growth. That is, if we don't have 4 percent growth, and it looks like we're going to have less than half of that right now, uh, the amount of spending that the government has already done is going to rise not to 25 percent of GDP, but to 27, 28 percent I mean, of GDP. The, the reason why the president's uh, numbers are falling in polls is because he, he seems out of touch with what's really happening. If you listen to that clip, I can barely contain myself. We pulled ourselves out. You know, we got, it took so long to get. Well, where are we? 700,000 jobs we are at every nine month, Charlie. We're not right. there. We're we at 9.6 percent unemployment. We I was out with 800,000 jobs I was a out, month. I was now out with uh, certain sectors of this economy where they were supposed to be shovel-ready jobs are still no jobs. Construction, 23 percent unemployment. This economy is really bad. I agree with you. 
They, 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 we need stimulus. We but do. think about what the president wants to do. He wants to raise taxes and not That's to not, bastardize yeah. Mike Norman's point. There you went, Mike. Yes. He got it right this time. Well, listen, I, you know, the stimulus, obviously, I don't believe, I disagree with Mike, I don't believe it worked initially. I think it's just a fact the market took its course and we came back and people realized we weren't going into the Great Depression. So I don't think another round is, is only going to add fuel to the fire and make things worse. <laughs> However, you, know, you look, you know, what's going to turn this market around? Getting confidence back in the consumer. Giving them money to go spend and, yeah. and, and get fake retail sales isn't going to help this. We want confidence, and that's why the president's numbers are falling dramatically. And there's no confidence in there. Doing another stimulus is not going to get that confidence back. What's getting confidence back is cutting taxes and getting jobs. Well, James, that's true. It's hard to find confidence when you're not sure if you've got a job next month. You can't be confident about the future to buy more things, certainly to buy a house. There's no doubt that the stubborn unemployment numbers have, have been a problem, uh, but I do think you're starting to see some, some uh, improvements there. And, and I agree that ever so slowly, but we're going to continue to see some uh, positive private sector job growth. We'll take the government job and the consensus worker noise out of those numbers yeah, going forward. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I think we'll start to get some benefit from all of the accommodative policies that we've seen from the Fed and we'll continue to see. Our thanks to PNC's James Dunnigan. Thanks so much. Thanks. And we'll see You're more welcome. of the panel Good coming up. Overall job growth may still be stuck in the ditch. But to, did, did today's report show that the private sector is maybe ready to hit the accelerator? We did, as you just heard James say, see private sector growth. That detail next. The closing every year at 4%, and that is still not helping the housing recovery. It's unbelievable. Now Harry Reid calling on all banks to suspend all foreclosures in all 50 states, as some banks are already doing voluntarily. Mortgage Banking Solutions, David Licken doesn't like what he sees, and he joins us now. David Licken, great to see you. First of all, you think, and you've said it before on air here at FBN, that, that mortgage rates will come below 4% before the end of the year, but it's not moving the market. That's the point. Interest rates alone are not moving the housing market. How do you move the market? At, we got to get people back to work, Dave and Liz. The biggest problem we have in this country is people are, the unemployment ranks are growing. We've got to get people back to work. I don't care if interest rates go to zero. Let's if we don't get this work, this the, the America back to work, let's get back we to the banking situation, ourselves. though, David. Uh, a lot of banks are suspending all foreclosure proceedings, but what we really need to stress here, because Charles Payne, by the way, I talked to him this afternoon about it. He said they may have not been following the paperwork properly. Now, of course, that's the issue that Harry Reid is pushing right now. But because of that, you've got J.P. Morgan, PNC, Ally, Bank of America, a lot of these names saying, OK, suspend all, you know, mortgage issues until we can figure <clears throat> out if people were just automatically stamping or robo-signing these things. Right. There, there was an issue related to some testimony that came out related to someone that, because we have so many foreclosures, this individual was just signing things off. That's what really started this. Yep. We've, got a, a, we've got the government in our business, and now we have a political process. Harry Reid is losing in his election, and we are finding ourselves in a position where he's doing this because he wants to get reelected. It's clearly political posturing. All right, David, stick around. I want to bring our bulls and bears into discussion. And Charlie, you got some breaking news on this story about how many other banks might be involved. Right. I, I, you know, sources tell Fox Business Network that you may be soon adding Citigroup and Wells Fargo to the list. What we wow. understand is that sources that you know the senior executives at both banks are considering whether to join the others. Now, we have statements from Citi. Citi basically says it's status quo. They're not part of this thing yet. Wells Fargo says the same. But we understand they do have, they, they are considering it. And by the way, I think, you know, they, they're saying they, right now that it's status quo. I don't think they have any choice but to join the bandwagon here. I mean, you know, there's tremendous political pressure. There's going to be state attorney generals up there, you know what's, you know, basically forcing them to make sure their paperwork was done right. And, you know, this is an election season. So they're going to have to join everybody else. I will say one other thing. The Bank of America moved to suspend all foreclosures because of this paperwork uh, uh, issue across all 50 states is, is, is a joke. And here's why it's a joke. Because only 28 states, I believe, have this right. waiver issue. 23. 23. Yeah. So just think about it. That's the only really places where, where this becomes a matter of, you know, did you fill out the paperwork right? Mm -hmm. Al Lewis, uh, don't we need to make sure that we've at least checked the paperwork properly, to be fair? Or is this all political? 
It's not all political, Liz. As we've seen every step of the way in this foreclosure crisis, that the banks have been completely unprepared to deal with it, whether it's loan modifications or whether it's foreclosures. Now it's this paperwork issue. They don't have trained staff to deal with this well, flood of paperwork that's coming their way. And guess what? If they screw it up, there's going to be lawsuits, and they're just going to make it worse. Al, I think a Al, lot of Al, them start with this out of an abundance of caution. Al, here's the, the uh, on your point, and maybe you guys can talk about this. A lot of these mortgages are embedded in CDOs and mortgage-backed securities. <laughs> how do you unwind that stuff and figure well, out that's where? That's a good question. Actually, we want to hear from the rest of the panel, but David, how do you?